Every update to Minecraft brings in new items, mobs, biomes, and tons of new features. But there are still so many things that need to be added, like the elusive capybara. These giant rodents are a rare sight, only found in groups of two to four around the newly revamped jungle temples. They have quite the appetite, favoring sweets like melons or sugarcane. And once tamed, they're incredibly sneaky critters. Because if you then right click a player with a melon, tamed capybara will then take an item from that player's inventory and pass it to you. <laughs> you can also give it chests to help carry all the stuff you steal. Who's my little partner in crime? Speaking of things to find in those brand new jungle temples, let's take a closer look inside one. Immediately, we'll meet a new mini boss. This fella doesn't play games. And time is of the essence because this monster is on a mission to sacrifice every last villager he's captured. Ah, ha, ha. Uh, well, uh, one out of four villagers isn't that bad, right? <laughs> Once you've beaten this menace, lightning will then strike down and reveal the sparkling spring. Just toss your worn down items inside and BAM! Just like that, items are fully repaired. No XP required. <laughs> hey, who's there? Oh, looks like I found the jungle key golem. These keys are the, well, key to unlock a new boss fight. But more on that new boss later. These little guys are gonna run away from you, so you have to catch them first. Get back here! Punch them enough and they'll drop on the ground for you to pick up. And don't worry, they still make those adorable little noises when you have them in your hand. Uh -oh. And you're actually gonna wanna pay close attention to those noises because it'll make more noise when you're looking towards one of the new structures. This is the home of the new boss. Once you find it, just walk up to the door and toss in the key. Uh, we can ignore that. There are a total of six keys that are scattered all throughout the world, and we'll collect them all as we explore more of this update's new features. Like the grappling hook. With the Caves and Cliffs update came a lot of awesome new world generation, but traversing this new world in the early game can be kind of daunting. The grappling hook is an easily obtainable item that can be upgraded throughout the game. It can be used to scale walls as well as swing across large gaps. Look at Greg as he slowly bridges across. <laughs> Watch how fast I can get from here to there. <laughs> You can even upgrade your grappling hook to have a motor and even a rocket. The rocket gives you a small boost through the air while the motor will automatically start dragging you. Though you might want some boots of feather falling for these guys. Ah. Oh, looks like we landed in one of a few new biomes that would really spice up the update. The Weeping Forest. It looks to be a mixture of the Cherry Grove and Dark Oak Forest, featuring two new wood types, Hazel and Aspen. I'm always a fan of different wood colors, and another shade of green would really look incredible. Uh-oh. Uh, uh this biome is also home to some ferocious new predators like these bears! Ow! <coughs> Uh, once you're done fighting off the bears, make sure to look around at these blueberries. A great starter food source, like sweet berries. And around these little bushes, you'll be able to find some new non-aggressive mobs, like dragonflies, as well as butterflies love to gather around them. Make sure you check out all the new flowers and foliage this biome has to offer. <laughs> Isn't nature beautiful? <laughs> no, leave me alone! One of the most requested features from update to update is vertical slabs. Mojang, please listen to us if you're watching. The building possibilities are endless with the addition of these. Just look at how amazing my slab house is. There's so much space. Not to mention this would really cut down on building costs. And I for one am all about saving trees, even in Minecraft. Aesthetically, these look amazing and can spice up any build. Speaking of builds that need to be spiced up, ocean monuments are so boring, but they could be so much better. Revamping them in the update would turn them from this into this. Nearly quadrupling the size of the ocean monument, this truly looks like a fit for an ancient structure. Guardians and elder guardians fiercely guard the treasures this temple holds, including chests scattered around and even axolotl prisoners. Plus, each ocean monument has a guaranteed trident stuck in the center, making it so much easier to acquire. That is, if you can find the ocean monument, they're easy easier to locate too, as they're now spottable from the surface due to this column structure. Oh, I love water. Wait, what's that? Another one of the keys for the boss. First, I just need to catch him. Hey, stop. Why are you so fast? Gotcha. Now, we'll save this little guy for later. 
while we jump to a new snowy biome. Imagine if snowy biomes had different creatures running around, from penguins to snow giraffes. Didn't know those were a thing. Well, snow biomes could have penguins that slide around across the ground, but uh, they are hunted by ferocious snow leopards. Although they are hostile at first, you can actually tame these guys with some mutton. Then you have your own personal bodyguard who will grant you some amazing boosts. Snow leopards will give strength to the player and increase speed. Now, I just hope he gets along with Kevin. Ugh. Kevin. Well, when exploring the updated snow biomes, you're gonna wanna go under them to check out the cave systems underneath. Similar to a dripstone cave, these icicle caves spawn with massive icicles scattered around, and they possess a rare form of ice, which can naturally spawn with loot inside. Look, there's a pickaxe! The loot ranges from things like bricks and diamonds to even enchanted tools and armor. Not to mention, you can occasionally find a <gasps> key! Yes! <laughs> Okay Don't you hate it when you're trying to bridge in the nether but pesky ghasts hit you off? Well, the next Minecraft update could contain bridge blocks. Not only do these look great in any build, but they seamlessly fit into the game as well. They're not just for aesthetics either, as they come with built-in rails to keep the players from falling off. Haha, <laughs> stupid ghasts can't hit me off now! Nothing can knock me down on my way to the overhauled nether fortress! Regular fortresses aren't even much of what the game claims. They're more like some broken bridges, if you ask me. This upgraded fortress, though, is now so much larger with way more to explore. You'll have to fight your way through more blazes and wither skeletons on your way to the central structure. Make sure you check every corner on your way there, as you never know where a chest is gonna spawn. Oh, now this is a fortress! Make your way inside to be met with a wither statue. This is where you'll be able to find some of the most overpowered loot, like ancient debris and even netherite ingots. Make sure you look closely though at the chests before you open them because the nether makes it hard to tell which ones are trapped. Ugh. You'll be able to collect your blaze rods, but make sure to also keep an eye out for the key! I <laughs> gotcha! You're coming with me. Now that we have three more of these, let's head back to the door and check it out. Ah! On the other side of this door is a unique new boss battle that I can't wait for. I just need to find those last keys. Now, if I was a key, where would I hide? So, combat and magic go hand in hand. I mean, without fire aspect on my sword, I'd actually have to cook my meals. Although, magic can now go way beyond enchantments with the addition of spell casting. There are too many spells to list, all stemming from eight different fields of magic, like fire, poison, Poison and blood, just to name a few. Each spell runs off of a mana system with powerful spells costing more to cast. Some of my personal favorite spells are Firebolt, which shoots a flaming projectile at your target. And this can even be upgraded into the much more dramatic Fireball, which launches a ball of flames through the air, burning and exploding whatever it hits. Certain spells will have different casting times, which them harder to use in a pinch. Spells will increase in rarity and power as you find them scattered throughout the world or defeat powerful enemies to unlock them. One of the most useful spells is Chain Lightning, which hits a target and jumps from enemy to enemy. Pretty useful if you're ever surrounded by zombies. Around the world, you can also come across unique armors which provide bonuses to different spells. You can even choose to go down a path of darkness and join forces with the Dead King. And then you can get the Black Hole ability and you can summon it on a village and then all the villagers will get sucked up into it uh, if you wanted to be. Another new biome is the Bayou, a much nicer looking version of the swamp in Mangrove Swamp. Traversing this area can be tricky, but if you're brave enough, you can bounce from lily pad to lily pad, just like our friends the frogs here. Those aren't the only mobs you'll find here though, as there are catfish swimming below. If you want to make base here, they'll probably be your best source of food. Be careful though, as you're not the only one who's hunting these catfish. Alligators are new predators that love to wait around for the right time to attack. You'll need to be quick and fight them off before they tear into you! Get back, you beast! Ah, whew, that was close. Luckily, bridges in the bayou can be very useful, not only to avoid the water, but also uh, those hungry gators. 
Speaking of swamps, swamp villagers need a home. And now, there's plenty more of it to go around with the upgraded villages. Look at these guys. It's easy to get lost exploring all the new features that could come with them as well. There are five new buildings to explore and loot, but that might not be as easy as it once was. Some of these villagers are tired of being bullied. They've decided to defend their villages with their trusty iron golems. The guard villager can be equipped with crossbows, swords, and shields, as well as armor of any type. If you have the hero of the village effect, you're able to change what armor and weapons the villagers have equipped. Any villager without a profession can be turned into a guard simply by giving them a weapon as well. Guarding the village is a full-time profession, but there are also eight new villager professions in addition to the guard. One of my favorites is the netherologist, an expert on the nether. Trading with him allows you to acquire maps for both fortresses as well as bastion remnants. Another useful villager is the oceanographer. His trades will grant you buried treasure maps and, if you're rich enough, heart of the sea and knotless shells. I recommend you check out the other village locations as well because there's a unique profession to each one of the different biome types. The last update to the end came in version 1.16, which revamped the end. It, it, no, wait, it just made hoglins and piglins turn into their respective zombified counterparts. So I would say an overhaul of the end is overdue. With such a barren dimension, there are so many biomes and mobs that could be added. Let's start at the Imperious Groove, a wonderful splash of color to an otherwise bleak landscape. This biome is filled with strange bluish green trees. Both types of trees can be turned into nice bluish planks for building. Be careful around the imperious mushroom trees though, as both their vines and leaves are incredibly sticky and slow the player's movement speed down significantly. By far, the strangest part of this biome has to be the naturally spawning water. Due to the water, endermen don't really spawn here, which is pretty rare. There are two other strange creatures that appear here though. No! Whoa! <laughs> The Snareling is a hostile mob that stays at distance shooting projectiles that ensnare the player. These cowards will run away trying to avoid the player. Then they come in close and hit you with their swinging arms. Chasing after them while avoiding their projectiles is really the only way to deal with these foes. However, Thumplings are definitely not cowards. These aggressive mobs charge on sight and try to use a smash attack with their hands. Curiously, if you punch one of them into blocks, it'll break the blocks around it, defeating such a Root must yield bones and leather? <laughs> no thank you. Another gorgeous new biome for you to explore is the Bulbous Gardens. Massive trees with transparent purple and blue shells. Blue flows can be seen hopping all around the biome. When provoked, they'll jump into the air to avoid attacks before crashing back down to the ground and dealing damage, as well as knockback. It's best not to provoke them and make your way inside the shells to collect the purple shroom lights for your overworld builds. While you're cutting into them, you might want to grab some bulbous logs as well. Although they appear white on the outside, the planks are actually a very unique shade of purple. Even the stripped logs are this amazing color. Whoa, check this out too. You're granted levitation from these strange bouncing bulbs. This makes it easier to traverse the end, but make sure you watch the timer. Uh, whoa, oh, oh, hello. A true oddity of the end, the puff bug. These cute little creatures travel in large schools floating through the air. But whatever you do, make sure sure not to anger them, as the entire school will turn on you. They'll turn into deadly missiles and attack from all angles. It's hard to hit them with their tiny size, so I choose to just run right into a massive new structure, the Ender Stronghold. The strongholds are recognizable from the surface by strange purple blocks that are protruding from the endstone. It's a maze of hallways, as well as trapped chests. You gotta be careful as you wander around the corners, because blastling guardians don't like any visitors. Visitors. These tanky foes will shoot projectiles at you that deal lots of knockback and make getting close a real struggle. It's best to bring a bow so you can fire back at them. Believe that the loot inside is worth it, as hopefully you'll find another key. Ha! <laughs> Come here, you little rascal. <laughs> yes! Now, terracotta could be so much cooler. I mean, just look at all the possibilities. Colorful glazed tiles to run over while I flip my many colored levers. Haha, <laughs> flip, flip. <laughs> I forgot what these do. <laughs> Guess I'll never know. Anyway, we've got ladders, buttons, fences, 
gates, and so much more. That's a lot of terracotta. Armor trims were added in 1.20 as a way to spice up the boring plain armor. Why would they just stop at armor though? Elytras were added to Minecraft in update 1.9, but have always just been this boring gray color. With so many items in the game being able to be customized with different colors and patterns, it's confusing why Mojang didn't want players dying elytras. In the next update though, players could make customized elytras with different colors as well as patterns. Applying your favorite banner to your elytra is a great way to show off to friends. Look at how jealous past me is with his boring old elytra. Ow! Please, Mojang, at least just let us have armor trims on our elytras too. Woo! Now, slime blocks are able to negate all fall damage and can be used to make some pretty sweet jumps. But it raises the question, why can't these be portable? Well, in the next update, slime boots could do just that. Equipped to the player's feet, these would not only negate fall damage, but give the player a small bounce off the ground for their next jump. This would make traversing cave systems and cliffs a breeze. <laughs> Oh, another incredible portable item that I would love to see added to Minecraft is the pocket jukebox. Jukeboxes are great for your bass, but what if you want to listen to music discs while you travel the world? You'd have to place your jukebox as you travel, then go back and get it. Well, with the pocket jukebox, you're able to insert a disc and then play it on the go. Just be careful not to get too distracted while jamming out. Yeah, boom. With all the new biomes that could be added in the update, players are going to need a way to locate them. And thankfully, Nature's Compass solves that issue. This helpful item is obtainable by crafting it using four logs and four saplings. What biome would you like to see? Just enter it into the compass and follow its guiding directions to the nearest biome. It makes exploring the world so much easier. And shields have not had a significant update since version 1.14. And that was a nerf. With the ability to craft tools of different materials, Materials, why doesn't Minecraft allow the same for shields? Well, the next update could add the ability for players to craft shields of different ore types, each with their own stats. The ability to parry a mob's attack with the shield and provide extra knockback would increase the utility of shields. Instead of always holding their shields up, players would then be incentivized to time their blocks with their foe's attacks. A risky maneuver, but I myself am an expert. <laughs> Come on, try to hit me. Ah, ow, okay, that wasn't ready. Come on, uh, let's go again. Hit me. Uh, ow! Again. Uh, aha! First try! Now, have you ever had a chest filled with enchanted books from your journey? It can be such a pain to find the exact enchantment you're looking for, and you'll probably have to hover over every book until you find it. Well, this could be very easily solved if the enchantment books had different textures per enchantment. So, instead of your chest looking like this, it could look like this. Such a simple feature would be a huge quality of life improvement. Also, torches are so medieval looking and don't really fit with any modern style builds. You could use sea lanterns, or or you could give these new glow balls a try. Craftable with glowstone dust and snowballs, if you throw these at a surface, it'll light up the surrounding area. This would be a nice alternative to invisible lights and it'd be obtainable in survival. Not only are they great for modern builds, but you can throw them all over caves. Just be careful as you return because the lights start to run out after a few minutes. Now, inventory space is limited and during the early game, players don't have access to shulker boxes. To solve this, the next update could add the much desired backpack item. This would be craftable in the early game and could be upgraded throughout the game as the player progresses. Backpacks would increase your storage and would even be customizable to give the players unique abilities. Some are incredibly useful, like the creeper backpack. When at low health, will detonate a creeper charge, exploding all the mobs around it. My personal favorite though has to be the spider backpack, which grants the player the ability to climb walls. I am Spider-Man! And I haven't even mentioned the changes to desert temples yet. These giant pyramids put those little guys to shame. Filled with puzzles, traps, and challenges that only a true adventurer could make it through. <laughs> I know how to do this. Ah, shoot. Or you could be smart like me and dig straight to the darn mining fatigue. Ugh, I guess I gotta go find and kill the pharaoh. Stupid pharaoh making me- Ow! I can't believe I have to- ah! I'm just gonna sneak around this. Ah! If 
you survive and finally do find the pharaoh, then you'll need to defeat him in order to break his mining curse. On guard, Mr. Pharaoh. Let's make this temple fatigue free. <laughs> now I can finally get my hands on all that sweet, sweet loot. Speaking of loot, there you are. I knew I'd find you down here. Come here, don't run. <laughs> well, looks like it's time to go and fight that final boss. Now we just use these last keys on the door. Any second now. Aha! And we're off to the boss fight. The ancient golem. Oh boy, that's a big one. Okay, it doesn't move, but it can swivel. Now, you're gonna need your best gear in order to be ready for this foe. He knows you're after his rare loot and he won't give up without a fight. Whoa, that's some knockback. And it's not the only way that he'll try to take you down. Go, he'll try to squash you with both his hands as well. If you think distance is your best bet, you'd be wrong. The golem is able to shoot a large beam of energy from his eye with incredible accuracy. However, the beam will give you an opportunity to attack his weak spot. Make your way to his back and land your strike. After several attacks, the golem will become enraged. He'll start to fire his beam more frequently now, and you need to wait for the right time to deal those finishing blows. As he's recharging his beam, take the opportunity to shoot an arrow straight into his eye. Bullseye! The fight is worth it, and you'll be able to acquire some legendary items that are found nowhere else in the world.